Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape. One advantage of using Jscape MFD Server as your file transfer server is that it's so easy to extend the storage capacity of your user accounts to one or more remote services and storage solutions. In this video, we're going to show you how to use a remote WebDAV service as a network storage for your Jscape MFD Server instance. I'm going to assume you already have a remote WebDAV service running and that it's accessible from your Jscape MFD server instance. Once you have that ready, log in to your Jscape MFD server environment and go to the Domains section. Select a domain and click Edit to view the settings for that domain. Navigate to the Network Storage module and click the Add button to add a new network storage object. Next, expand the protocol drop-down list and select WebDAV. Notice that there are several other services and storage solutions to choose from. We've provided some links in the description or in the post in case you want to try out other network storage options. Click OK to proceed. In the Network Storage Parameters dialog, start by assigning a name to this network storage object. This will be used to identify this particular network storage in this Jscape MFD server instance. Here, I'm just going to use ns-webdav. Next, specify the host name or IP address of the webdav service you want to connect to. After that, scroll down to the authentication panel and enter the username of an account on your webdav server. I'm connecting to a WebDAV service on another Jscape MFD server instance, so I'm going to use the recommended notation, which is username, at, and then the domain on that Jscape MFD server instance. Of course, I also need to specify that user account's corresponding password. Notice that I just left the domain field blank. That's because I already specified the domain in the username field. Lastly, if you're using a Jscape MFT server instance as your WebDAV server, enter forward slash WebDAV into the path field. Other WebDAV servers may not require this bit of information. Should you wish to test this WebDAV connection, just click the Test Server button to run a test. If the test succeeds, you should see a message that says, Network Storage Test Passed. Click OK to proceed. When you're back at the main screen, you should see your newly created WebDAV network storage object. Now that you have that WebDAV network storage object ready, the next step is to map this network storage to a user's or group's virtual path. For this example, let's just map it to a user's virtual path. Go to the Users module and select the user account whose virtual path you wish to map that WebDAV network storage object with. Next, click Edit to edit that user account. Go to the Paths tab and click Add to add a new virtual path. Give this virtual path a name, for example, WebDAV Share. Don't forget to prefix it with a forward slash. Next, click the Network Storage Option button and select the name of the WebDAV storage object you created earlier. Click OK to proceed. You should then see your newly created fertile path among your list of fertile paths. So basically, when this user logs in, one of the folders it will see listed in its root directory is the fertile path you just created. That folder is actually mapped to your WebDAV network storage object. Click OK to proceed. So now we've got everything set up. Let's now see this in action. Let's log in to one of the file transfer services of this Jscape MFD server instance. In my case, I see that I have an HTTP web service activated, so I'll try this out. I bring up a browser and log in using the user account I edited earlier. And true enough, 
I see a folder that matches the name of the virtual path I created earlier. And if I upload a file to this folder, I will actually be uploading that file or files to the remote WebDAV server. That's it. Now you know how to use a remote WebDAV service as a network storage for your Jscape MFT server instance.